You're listening to Radio Maria, a Christian voice in your home. We now present our program, Fatima and the First Saturdays, brought to you by the Communal First Saturdays Apostolate. Here's your host, Dr. Katrina Layden. Thank you. Let us begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. I ask pardon of you for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Remember, God wishes to establish devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary in the world. To do this, Our Lady gave us two special requests. Of these two requests, the first Saturdays is the most important and what we are responsible for doing. Let's do our part. But if we wish to establish devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, it's not enough for the first Saturday's devotion to be done privately. It must be established in parishes and not in any public form, but in a way that is approved by the church. What we call the communal first Saturdays is approved by the church together with the use of the communal first Saturdays devotional book. In our last episode, we discussed the first two parts of the secret of Fatima that Our Lady revealed to the Fatima children on July 13, 1917. The title of today's episode is The Secret of Fatima Continued. The Church revealed the first two parts of the secret to the public in the early 1940s. The third part of the secret was revealed by the Church in the year 2000. Today, we will, be, we will finish discussing the second part of the secret and then discuss the third part. However, before we begin, we will, we will remind you how we ended the last episode. In the second part of the secret, Our Lady warned us that if we did not do what she told us, Russia would spread her errors throughout the world. This indeed happened. The errors of Russia are communism, which spread throughout the world by the 1930s. This all happened because we did not do what she told us to do. Although her first request, the consecration, was fulfilled according to the church, the second special request, the first Saturdays, has not been fulfilled by a sufficient number of the faithful. The consecration was for the Pope to do. The first Saturdays is for us to do. Our Lady is expecting this from us. We will now proceed with the discussion about the consequences of Russia spreading her errors. Much of the material is from the Fatima and the First Saturday's book. The commentary on Our Lady's Third Apparition on July 13, 1917 continues. It is interesting to note that in 1920, Russia, which became the controlling member of the Soviet Union, became the first nation to legalize abortion since the reign of paganism. Lenin had been preaching that a woman has a right to her own body. Of course, a baby has a distinct body of his or her own. Also, abortion became the very cornerstone of the communist state. This legalization of abortion established the claim that rights come from the state, not God, whose very existence is denied by the communist state. Also, the legalization of abortion did even more than destroy the right to life upon which all other rights are founded. The legalization of abortion became the chief means of destroying the family and denying the father's rights, since only the mother could claim quote, the right, end of quote, to kill the child as decided by the government. Hence, the father was denied the right to protect his child. This denial of the father's rights weakened the father's interest in taking responsibility for the family. Losing a sense of responsibility, men became more disposed to exploit women. As a result, 
marriage and the family became greatly weakened. In all of these ways, the Soviet government and other communist governments gained greater control over the people by not only pretending to take the place of God, but also of the family. This continues to be true in other countries today. At the same time, the Soviet Union undermined motherhood, not only by abortion, but also by pressuring women to enter the labor force. With both parents missing from the home, the government had the opportunity to usurp the right, their right to educate their own children. Also, by greatly increasing the labor pool, it was possible to pay less for labor than what the people's labor was worth. This enlarged workforce gave the appearance of government support for women, while in fact, it was enslaving them. Yet, there is a lady, our blessed mother, who will give women their day and thus the rest of mankind. Further, the government also denied the right to all forms of private property that could be accumulated by the people's labor. Heavy taxation is demanded in the Communist Manifesto as a means of confiscating property and centralizing power. In addition, one of the marks of communism is that it continuously refines its methods of deception as time and circumstances change. Control of the media and education allows communism to shape the minds of citizens, especially the young. Communism uses many alternative names as part of the deception. It also gradually changes the meaning of the words by which it spreads its errors throughout the world. Among those rights just discussed, as well as others denied by international atheistic communism, there is one denial of rights which is the most damaging of all. This denied right is the right to religious freedom Or more precisely, the right denied is to be free from coercion in the practice of religion. The denial of this most excellent right became the basis for the communist state to persecute religion, especially the Catholic Church. This persecution places souls in jeopardy of being eternally lost because they may be deprived of the sacraments. Also, in the denial of this right, the communist state was and is able to attempt to control or remove the greatest obstacle to the subjection of the people of the entire world to itself. This obstacle to communism is the Catholic Church. In the communist states, in the communist states attempt to remove this obstacle, which is the Catholic Church, It has infiltrated her in an effort to gain control over her and silence her. However, in any case, Jesus promised that the gates of hell shall not prevail against his church. As we see in uh, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 18. International communism will fail. Our Lady has promised that her Immaculate Heart will triumph and that we need the first Saturday's devotion for that to happen. The Fatima message is there to keep us on the narrow path. In addition, the Catholic Church can provide a prophetic voice which confronts governments with the standards of true justice. As a comparison, one can think of how John the Baptist confronted King Herod in defense of the family. The church must speak the truth, even if that means martyrdom and the shedding of one's blood. It is another communist belief and falsehood that we progress toward a new world order by conflict. Communism claims that it is through conflict we evolve into a more perfect society. Hence, the communists pit one group against another, one class against another, one race against another, one religion against another, non-believers against Christians, one nation against another, 
and even one gender or, quote, genders, end of quote, against another or others, etc. Yet, the destruction of the family greatly accelerated with the legalization of divorce following the deterioration of Christian culture. The attack on the family is all too familiar and happening before our very eyes. Nonetheless, the Lord in his divine mercy wishes to bring healing to all those who have suffered so much from these attacks. Our Lady said Russia would spread her errors throughout the world, promoting wars and the persecution of the church. Promoting wars would certainly be one major manifestation of the communist philosophy of conflict. War can be used as a means of bringing, bringing a nation under subjection and control. Even before Russia would spread her errors, World War I so weakened Russia that it was easier for the communist revolution to succeed in 1917. What are we to say about World War II? At the expense of her own people's lives, Russia was the real winner. World War II enabled Russia to gain control of Eastern Europe. Not long after the war, China became a communist nation. Its own heirs came from Russia. Much could be said about the other wars of the 20th century. Further, the persecution of the church was well known in Eastern Europe, China, and in many other countries in the world. It was by far the worst persecution of the church in history. However, the persecution of the church in China and other areas of the world still continues. That's important to know. The text commentary continues. Today, what Our Lady warned has come to realization. The many communist errors in the world have led to the exclusion of God in many places and the breakdown of true religion. We see the many ways that the family is attacked and destroyed. We see how the world is submerged in a flood of countless lies and deceits. Going back to Sister Lucia's words, Our Lady said, quote, The good will be martyred. The Holy Father will have much to suffer. Various nations will be annihilated. In the end, my immaculate heart will triumph. End of quote. This sentence is further developed in the third part of the secret. The next sentence concerns the promised triumph of the immaculate heart of Mary. Our Lady said that, quote, in the end, my immaculate heart will triumph. End of quote. It would not be fitting for end to refer to the end of the world and the second coming of Jesus. The end of the world will turn our attention to the final triumph of Christ and is coming visibly in the flesh. On the other hand, Our Lady's triumph, quote, in the end, end of quote, refers to the end of the persecution of the church and the beginning of a period of world peace which will precede the final events in history. It is fitting that during some period of history, there will be a triumph of grace over sin universally to show that Christ wishes to defeat Satan through the woman. As Genesis says, quote, I will put enmity between you and the woman, end of quote. And we can see that in chapter 3, verse 15. Also, as St. John Paul II said in his book, Crossing the Threshold of Hope, Quote, Christ will conquer through Mary because he wants the church's victories now and in the future to be linked to her. End of quote. After Our Lady's victory, Satan and his angels will be held bound for a period of time and will not be able to tempt humans such as with power and wealth. However, humans will continue to have the weaknesses of original sin and the temptations of the world but they will be able to triumph over their sins with the help of the graces of the Holy Spirit. 
The faithful will triumph over sin because Our Lady will obtain these graces for them. Our Lady continued, quote, The Holy Father will consecrate Russia to me, and she will be converted, and a period of peace will be granted to the world. End of quote. Someone might take this to mean that the consecration of Russia will bring about the period of peace. Yet Our Lady is simply saying two things about Russia, that it will be consecrated and that it will be converted. Our Lady did not say that the consecration alone will bring about the conversion of Russia. However, we have already seen the first stage of that conversion. It is imperative that we attend carefully to her exact words. Our Lady said, as we have seen previously, quote, I shall come to ask for the consecration of Russia to my Immaculate Heart and the communion of reparation on the first Saturdays. If my requests are heeded, Russia will be converted. End of quote. Again, Our Lady said requests, not request. The conversion of Russia will result from the fulfillment of the two special requests. The first Saturday's devotion provides a model for the greatest way to make reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Through her heart, we can obtain the graces of sanctification from the Lamb of God. Peace, the conversion of nations, and the salvation of souls can only result from the sanctification of the people, beginning with the Catholic Church. This is why our Lord and his mother have given us the first Saturdays. Russia's complete conversion depends upon the necessary sanctification of the Catholic Church. The Holy Father did his part with the bishops by making the consecration. It remains for the faithful to do their part by making the first Saturdays. Note, our focus should not be on something we as the faithful cannot do. Our focus should be on what we should be doing, that is, fulfilling the first Saturdays. At this time, it seems that a very small number are fulfilling the second special request for the first Saturdays and that many more will be needed to fulfill the first Saturdays to bring about the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. From the practice of the first Saturdays should arise the daily practice of the faith that is necessary to bring peace to the world. On any first Saturday, the faithful can fulfill the second special request, namely the first Saturdays individually. Yet, as the Pope and the bishops acted communally in fulfilling Our Lady's request, so it is possible for the faithful to be more efficaciously to more efficaciously fulfill the second request, the first Saturdays, in a communal form as well. The approved communal first Saturdays offers an easy way to fulfill all the conditions requested to make reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. The communal first Saturdays will make it easier for each person and for a larger number of people to fulfill Our Lady's request. Further, communal prayer has greater power to make reparation and obtain grace. At the same time, it will make it possible to bear witness visibly that Our Lady's request has been fulfilled when the conversion of Russia and the world takes place. In addition, as already mentioned, the communal form of the devotion will bear visible witness that the triumph has been achieved through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Moreover, the communal first Saturdays makes use of its approved devotional so that everyone can follow along. The use of the book it is itself a visible sign that parishes stand together against the evil one throughout the world. The conversion of Russia 
implies the reunion of the Russian Orthodox Church with the Catholic Church. The Russian Orthodox Church represents the largest segment of Byzantine churches. Its reunion with the Catholic Church should greatly influence the Greek Orthodox churches and the others as well. We cannot exclude here that these latter churches will also be encouraged to reunite with the Catholic Church more directly and by other means. In any case, not only will heeding Our Lady's request lead to the conversion of Russia, but this heeding will also lead, as St. John Paul II said, to the church breathing with both of her lungs. The reunion of the East and West should greatly strengthen the church to be able to have a powerful effect upon the world and so bring peace as well as the salvation of many souls. Jesus and his mother will spiritually reign with the saints over the world. I think this is just uh, just beautiful. Um, just this whole, you know, realization of how the church will come together. And St. John Paul II's words um, about br the church breathing with her b both of her lungs. It's, that's just beautiful. The East and the West and just something to really look forward to. Okay, the text commentary continues. On the other hand, those who believe that humanity can attain the perfection of happiness within history fall into the error of millenarianism, especially in its political form. The promised peace is only for a period of time, and the world still will experience the effects of original sin. This weakness will lead to complacency and lukewarmness in practicing the first Saturdays. This means that the period of peace will come to an end and Satan will be released and foster a falling away from the Catholic Church and even a rebellion against the Church. Yet, Satan will be defeated and thrown into the lake of fire. This means that there will be another period of peace before the second coming of Christ and we can refer to um, the book of Revelations, chapter 20, verses 7 to 10. The second coming of Christ marks the time when all those who are saved will fully realize the kingdom of God in body and soul in their resurrection. However, we do not know when this will take place. Nonetheless, before the second coming of Christ, perfect happiness in the kingdom of God is first and most excellently realized by the beatific vision when one enters heaven. Lucia's words. In Portugal, the dogma of the faith will always be preserved. Do not tell this to anybody. Francisco, yes, you may tell him. And this was Our Lady speaking that Lucia told us. And um, Our Lady continues, when you pray the rosary, say after each mystery, O oh my Jesus, forgive us, save us from the fire of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are most in need. After this, there was a moment of silence, and then I asked, Is there anything more that you want of me? Our Lady said, No, I do not want anything more of you today. Then, as before, as before, Our Lady began to ascend towards the east until she finally disappeared in the immense distance of the firmament. And I want to mention here, too, before we go on with the commentary, that this, what we just read, this is where um, Our Lady had mentioned the third part of the secret. But because it wasn't revealed till the year 2000, um, it was not... It was not read here, uh, but we will be getting to that um, shortly. So the text commentary continues on what we did read. The preservation of the dogma of the faith in Portugal does not mean that Portugal itself will always be a practicing Christian country. History has proven otherwise to a certain extent. The preservation of the faith in Portugal implies that the presence of the Shrine of Our Lady of Fatima in Portugal provides a strong reminder of the message brought from heaven by Our Lady, influencing the teaching of faithful clergy in Portugal and elsewhere. The faithful who live the Fatima message will themselves strengthen the clergy in their faith, 
before, during, and after the period of peace. The message of Fatima can be a kind of easy shortcut to the faithful adherence to Catholic dogma and practice as found in the deposit of faith and as that deposit is interpreted by the magisterium of the church. With the approval of the magisterium of the church that it has received, Fatima is able to be a correct interpretation of many fundamental truths. Thus, the message of Fatima can be a great help in the preservation of the Catholic faith for people throughout the world. The First Saturdays plays an important role in this, especially if celebrated in the communal form. It could be, too, that Our Lady's words imply that Catholic dogma will not be preserved in many other places in the world, especially during the Church's trial preceding the period of peace. Since Our Lady said that the dogma of the faith would always be preserved in Portugal, the same would apply to the period following the period of peace until the second coming of Christ. In regard to the prayer Our Lady asked to be said after each decade of the rosary, it is an important reminder of the reality of hell shown to the children. It is also a prayer through which we can exercise great mercy toward our neighbors by pleading that they be saved from such a terrible outcome. Most of the things we do for our neighbor are of a passing and transitory nature, but salvation is forever. What a blessing then we have in this additional prayer. This is a good place to stop for a minute and discuss Divine Mercy and the First Saturdays. As Many of you know Divine Mercy Sunday is this Sunday. This is truly a wonderful day. On this day, one can obtain complete forgiveness of sins and punishment by doing the following. One, receive Holy Communion in the state of grace on this day. Two, go to confession within 20 days. At the same time, it is very important to note that our devotion to the Divine Mercy is only fulfilled if we have mercy on others. As the scripture says in St. Matthew, quote, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. End of quote. Fulfilling the Fatima message, and particularly the fat first Saturdays, is a great act of spiritual mercy, which is higher than any form of corporal mercy shown to others. The spiritual work of the First Saturdays is not just for one or two people, it's for the whole world. The First Saturdays transforms the world as it brings salvation to countless souls. The public church-approved communal First Saturdays makes it easier for people to fulfill the First Saturdays and do so together. There is power in prayer together. Together we can provide even more powerful spiritual acts of mercy through the communal first Saturdays. You are encouraged to learn more by registering for the Fatima and the first Saturday study groups. For more information, please go to www.communalfirstsaturdays.org. For those of you who may have recently joined, this is Dr. Katrina Layden, and you are listening to Fatima and the First Saturdays on Radio Maria, a Christian voice in your home. Today, we are examining the second and third part of the secret of Fatima that Our Lady revealed on July 13, 1917. We are doing this by going over some of the book, Fatima and the First Saturdays. Please remember that Radio Maria is 100% listener supported We depend on the generosity of our listeners. There are many ways you can help. You can make a donation on the phone at 1-888-408-0201. Again, that is 1-888-408-0201. You can also go to radiomaria.us. Again, that's www.radiomaria.us and click on Ways to Donate up at the top. Your donation will be a great gift. We continue 
with Lucia's words concerning the third part of the Fatima secret. After the two parts which I have already explained, at the left of Our Lady and a little above, we saw an angel with a flaming sword in his left hand, flashing. It gave out flames that looked as though they would set the world on fire, but they died out in contact with the splendor that Our Lady radiated towards him from her right hand. Pointing to the earth with his right hand, the angel cried out in a loud voice, Penance! 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 And we saw in an immense light that is God, something similar to how people appear in a mirror when they pass in front of it, a bishop dressed in white, we had the impression that it was the Holy Father. Other bishops, priests, men and women religious going up a steep mountain, at the top of which there was a big cross of rough hewn trunks as of a cork tree with the, the bark. Before reaching there, the Holy Father passed through a big city, half in ruins and half trembling with halting steps afflicted with pain and sorrow. He prayed for the souls of the corpse he met on his way. Reach, having reached the top of the mountain, on his knees, at the foot of the big cross, he was killed by a group of soldiers who fired bullets and arrows at him. And in the same way, there died one after another, the other bishops, priests, men and women religious, and various lay people of different ranks and positions. Beneath the two arms of the cross, there were two angels, each with a crystal aspersorium in his hand, in which they gathered up the blood of the martyrs, and with it sprinkled the souls that were making their way to God. And you can read um, what I just read on the Vatican website um, in Message of Fatima. Mm -hmm. Commentary. Our Lady held her heart in her right hand and the rosary in her left. This is what Lucia told Cardinal Bertoni in a second interview, as you can read in The Last Secret of Fatima on page 56. Again, we see from an earlier apparition that the heart in her right hand symbolizes that Our Lady is asking for reparation to her Immaculate Heart. Sister Lucia's second interview with Cardinal Bertoni is clearly a very important one. This interview, together with the third part of the secret, supplies much to ponder. In this part of the secret, we read that the splendor radiating from Our Lady's right hand puts out the fire issuing from the angel's sword. In the interview, Sister Lucia told Cardinal Bertoni, quote, During the vision, Our Lady was radiating light, and she held a heart in her right hand and a rosary in her left, end of quote. When we combine these words with the third part of the secret above, we see that the light radiating from her right hand issued from her heart. The light issuing from her heart, held in her right hand, extinguished the flames issuing from the angel's sword. These flames threatened to set the world on fire. This shows us that the Immaculate Heart of Mary, in devotion to her heart, is protecting the world from destruction. This devotion consists in the continuous practice of reparation made for the sins against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Let us again underline from a previous appearance that Our Lady holding her heart is a sign of seeking reparation to her heart. This reparation is above all realized in a communion of reparation on the first Saturdays. By above all, we mean above all the other practices of reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. 
The text commentary continues. Reparation is also made by the other practices of the first Saturdays, and they help us to prepare for and intensify the reverend dispositions for Holy Communion. Keep in mind, uh, we will see Our Lady's heart in her hand two more times in later apparitions as Sister Lucia will reveal to us. Well, Sister Lucia saw it, but we'll learn of it. Okay. The text commentary continues. The first Saturdays represents the highest form of reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, especially if done in a communal form, such as the communal first Saturdays. St. John the 23rd said, quote, Clearly, the most efficacious kind of prayer for gaining the divine protection is prayer that is offered publicly by the whole community. For our Redeemer said, Where two or three are gathered together for my sake, there am I in the midst of them. End of quote. Sister Lucia said, quote, People lack peace because they lack faith, lack penance, and lack public and collective prayer. And we can read that in A Pathway Under the Gaze of Mary. These words may well be the result of the falling numbers of those attending religious services and other public prayer gatherings. At the same time, these words also may provide a clue in regard to the first Saturday's devotion and the need for a communal form, such as the communal first Saturdays. Let us then make a special effort to renew public and collective prayer through the first Saturday's devotion in a public and communal form in order to help obtain those graces that can help lead others back to the fulfillment of their Sunday obligation and their salvation. It is important to understand that one cannot fulfill the first Saturdays unless one fulfills one's Sunday and Holy Day obligations. Also, returning to Sister Lucia's words, the rosary was in her, Our Lady's left hand. Our Lady encourages us to pray the rosary and to offer it in reparation to her Immaculate Heart. Our Lady has joined devotion to her Immaculate Heart and devotion of the rosary together as an even more potent weather, weapon against evil than the rosary alone. This union of the two devotions is most especially practiced in the first Saturday's devotion. Further, the rosary, and especially in union with devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary as part of the first Saturday's, is essential to Our Lady's triumph. From the devotion of the Rosary and the Immaculate Heart of Mary on the first Saturdays, Our Lady intends that we should obtain the grace to practice the Rosary on a daily basis. In fact, a Dominican theologian wrote an article the size of a book on the great power of combining the above two devotions together. And you can read more about this in the book called Fatima, The Rosary in the Heart of Mary by Mars. Marceliano Yamaras OP. In the light of what was just said, the communal first Saturdays provides a rosary that gives special emphasis to the practice of devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary within the mysteries. This can help the faithful become acquainted with the combination of these two devotions. Continuing the commentary on the third part of the secret, The angel cried out, penance, penance, penance. In the Catechism of the Catholic Church, we find the following explanation of penance. Quote, Jesus' call to conversion and penance, like that of the prophets before him, does not aim first at outward works, sackcloth and ashes, fasting and mortification, but at the conversion of the heart, interior conversion. Without this, such penances remain sterile and false. However, interior conversion urges expression 
invisible signs, gestures, and works of penance. Interior repentance is a radical reorientation of our whole life, a return, a conversion to God with all our heart, an end of sin, a turning away from evil, with repugnance toward the evil actions we have committed. At the same time, it entails the desire and resolution to change one's life with hope in God's mercy and trust in the help of His grace. This conversion of heart is accompanied by a salutary, salutary pain and sadness, which the fathers called affliction of spirit and repentance of heart. End of quote. St. Thomas Aquinas shows us that penance is a virtue and the act of a virtue. This virtue and act are in the will. Penance is thus in the will and in an interior act. Penance is not an emotion of sorrow, but a sorrow of the will for sin. Nonetheless, metaphorically, we speak of penance as a conversion of the heart. Here, heart is taken to be a symbol of the interior life. By reflection, we can discern the differences between emotions and will within ourselves. The Catechism of the Catholic Church continues, quote, The human heart is heavy and hardened. God must give man a new heart. Conversion is first of all a work of the grace of God who makes our hearts return to him. Quote, restore us to thyself, O Lord, that we may be restored, end of quote. God gives us the strength to begin anew. It is in discovering the greatness of God's love that our heart is shaken by the horror and weight of sin and begins to fear offending God by sin and being separated from him. The human heart is converted by looking upon him whom our sins have pierced. Quote, let us fix our eyes on Christ's blood and understand how precious it is to his Father. For, poured out for our salvation, it has brought to the whole world the grace of repentance. End of quote. This is from St. Clement of Rome. The Catechism, uh, end, end of quote. Okay, the text commentary continues. We cannot forget that penance is not our work, but a work of God's grace. God in his mercy grants this grace to us, thanks to the sacred heart of Jesus, through the mediation of the immaculate heart of Mary. By the grace of God, we will continue to give thanks to him and never stop giving him thanks. There are many words which can be used in, pl in place of the word reparation. Penance and satisfaction are but two of them. Reparation is also a part of penance in a more complete explanation of penance. We see this in the following passage from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Quote, Many sins wrong our neighbor. One must do what is possible in order, or in order to repair the harm. Example given, return stolen goods, restore the reputation of someone slandered, pay compensation for injuries. Simple justice requires as much. But sin also injures and weakens the sinner himself, as well as his relationship with God and neighbor. Absolution takes away sin, but it does not remedy all the disorders sin has caused. Raised up from sin, the sinner must still recover his full spiritual health by doing something more to make amends for the sin. He must, quote, make satisfaction for, end of quote, or expiate his sins. This satisfaction is also called penance. The satisfaction that we make for our sins, however, is not so much ours as though it were not done through Jesus Christ. We who can do nothing ourselves, as if just by ourselves, we can do all things with the cooperation of him who strengthens us. Thus man has nothing of which to boast, but all our boasting is in Christ in whom we make satisfaction by bringing forth fruits that befit repentance. These fruits 
have efficacy from him. By him, they are offered to the Father, and through him, they are accepted by the Father. End of quote. The third part of the secret also concerns the Holy Father journeying, journeying through a ruined city and up to a hill to the foot of a cross where he is mortally wounded. And the following is um, also from the message of Fatima on the Vatican website. Quote, John Paul II asked for the envelope containing the third part of the secret following the assassination attempt on the 13th of May, 1981. As regards the passage about the bishop dressed in white, that is the Holy Father, as the children immediately realize during the vision, who is struck dead and falls to the ground, Sister Lucia was in full agreement with the Pope's claims that it, quote, it was a mother's hand that guided the bullet's path, and in his throes the Pope halted at the threshold of death, end of quote. The text commentary continues. A prophecy doesn't necessarily have to come true as it seems to be predicted. God can intervene. Thus, St. John Paul II could be the Pope, as he concluded, referred to in the vision, even though he didn't die from the attempted assassination. It should also be said that a vision may sometimes not completely represent what actually happens. Ordinarily, we say that a death can only be confirmed by a doctor. It is not enough to simply look at the body. The vision was still open as to whether the person that was seen was dead or not. Thus, the Holy Father could appear to be dead in the vision, but not really be dead. In some cases, we even speak of people who died and came back to life. In some of these cases also, it could be said that these persons were not really dead. In any case, it could be said that the vision was left open as to whether the Holy Father died or not. This means that the Holy Father could say that the Pope in the vision was him. Also, in the vision, there are many bishops, priests, religious, and lay faithful who follow the Holy Father to suffer martyrdom at the foot of the cross. Apart from the millions of unborn children who have suffered death in the past 100 years, there have been millions of martyrs in that time as well. Even now, large numbers continue to be martyred. It was estimated that 90,000 died as martyrs in, a recent, in the recent year of 2016. A kind of genocide had, has been taking place in the Middle East where Christianity has existed for 2,000 years. Yet, as the blood of martyrs is shed, the number of saints and their prayers grow larger in heaven, and the church grows stronger in its resolve to follow Christ. The martyrs offer themselves in sacrifice to the Lord, often together with whole communities of Christians and in solidarity with the church. On the first Saturdays, offering the Eucharistic heart of Jesus to the Holy Trinity, in union with the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the church, is a splendid way to join in solidarity with our brothers and sisters who sacrifice their lives for Christ. It can be an excellent public witness to the solidarity by practicing the First Saturdays in a complete communal form. The communal First Saturdays is such a practice. As we come to the close of our program, I would like to give you a preview of what we will be discussing in our next program that airs again this coming Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. The title of the episode will be the Eucharistic Revival from Heaven. You will not want to miss this program. Most of the material in this talk and many other important facts can be found in the book called Fatima and the First Saturdays. In fact, there are study groups using this book. People from different parts of the world connect online. You are welcome and invited to register for our next group that start 
in May. Please go to www.communalfirstsaturdays.org. Again, that's www.communalfirstsaturdays.org. Please remember that Radio Maria is 100% listener supported. We depend on the generosity of our listeners. There are many ways you can help. You can make a donation on the phone at 1-888-408-0201. Again, that is 1-888-408-0201. You can also go to www.radiomaria.us. Again, that's radiomaria.us and click on ways to donate up at the top. Your donation will be a great gift. Remember, to fulfill the first Saturdays, there are four practices, each with the intention of making reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. These practices are one, confession, two, receiving Holy Communion, three, praying five decades of the Rosary, and four, the separate and additional 15-minute meditation on the mysteries of the Rosary while keeping Our Lady company. Each of these four practices need to be done with the intention of making reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. If you don't do one of the practices or don't do each practice in reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, you have not done the first Saturdays. We don't want this to happen to you. So be sure to download the free brochure that gives you essential information about the first Saturdays. When you go to the website, click on the button that reads free brochure up at the top. Again, the website is www.communal firstsaturdays.org. Also, we encourage you to get the book called The Communal First Saturdays Devotional. This book will help you do the first Saturdays correctly and without error. This book is available on our website. Again, that's www.communalfirstsaturdays.org. Remember, God wishes to establish devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary in the world. To do this, Our Lady gave us two special requests. Of these two requests, the first Saturdays is the most important and what we are responsible for doing. Let us do our part. But if we wish to establish devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, it's not enough for the first Saturday's devotion to be done privately. It must be established in parishes and not in any public form, but in a way that is approved by the church. What we call the communal first Saturdays is approved by the church together with the use of the communal first Saturdays devotional book. Let us end with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O most holy Trinity, I adore you. My God, my God, I love you in the most blessed sacrament. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I hope you have a very blessed Divine Mercy Sunday this coming Sunday. This is Dr. Katrina Layden with Fatima and the First Saturdays. Until next time.